Ah, it feels so good to be back and ready to get everything back up and running again. I wonder what season three is going to be like this time. Wait, I'm getting a call. PG? That's a weird caller ID, but yeah, it seems so familiar. Hello? Um, hello. Is this Wayne Z0207? Yes, at your service. Oh, hey, this is the Five Nights at Freddy's phone guy. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry for missing your welcome back party or whatever it was. We had an animatronic incident to take care of, so I couldn't make it to this year's party. Hey, don't worry about it. That party was a ruckus party anyways. Don't let it bother you too much, okay? You had to do what you had to do, and that's all that matters. I know, but Obi-Wan and Anakin wanted me to tag along and help out, and I just couldn't do them this service. I felt bad for disappointing everyone, so I wanted to call and wish you the best for this year, as well as season three of your podcast. Figured that would make your day. Well, that's awful nice of you to say, phone guy. And I wish you the best as well. Don't get eaten up, okay? Also, what is your real name? Hey, I can only try not to. They're quite vicious, you know. And unfortunately, my boss does not allow me to disclose that information. I just simply wanted to wish you all the best. And good luck with those cards. I heard the audience is going to be really excited for them. Wait, how'd you know about the... He hung up. You didn't hear anything, folks. Just enjoy the pilot episode of season three and pretend none of this happened. Okay? Thank you. You ever found yourself finding the perfect link in the middle of research to communicate information or tell your story? Hey, you found yourself in a situation where you must publicly speak or record a video. Need better way to afford tech books and pay fees. We had you covered on all fronts. Welcome to Season 3's latest episode of Life of a Content Creating College Student. And now, here are your stars of this podcast. Wayne Lean, Hero 207 and Charlotte Wade. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello folks, WayneZ0207 here. Hope you're doing fantastic as always, and welcome to Season 3 of Life of a Content Creating College Students. We're gonna get right neck deep into the action, but first, I have something special to show you. Special Star Trek sound effect, activate! So fancy! Hello everyone, Charlotte here. Hello everyone. So, what you just saw is the appearance of the new speaker icons, which indicate when one of us speaks. So, now you have a better flow of the conversation, and this is also sort of a quote-unquote face reveal. Oh! Welcome to our faces. You are blessed and you are welcome to see them. Absolutely, by all means. I mean, it's been, what, three months since the last upload? Yeah, I think it's October now, so I think we're going on four. Oh, that that makes a good point. I mean, I technically ceased uploads right around the 21st, so that sort of still makes it three months. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. I mean... June, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, we're cruising in on three. Yeah, cruising it on free indeed. Time is an illusion. Yes. I, it's so hard to keep track. <laughs> yes, by by all means. Time is just, it's it fleets. But you know what I know about time? It feels good to be back, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And I think it's about time we got into this. Okay. Well, Colton, I'm very excited for this season. I know we have some changes coming, some really productive changes, which is very exciting. And I'm just ready to to bop on in with the first question. What are two things that went well for you in the last few weeks? Okay, so first off, it's actually related to one of my classes. Ever since I got into the course social media marketing, I got to make some fun posts and videos for my social media marketing class, including a subtle branding for Hootie's birthday in a celebration post for Oregon Tech. 
You know, I think I saw one of your social media posts uh, from class on the official Oregon Tech uh, website on Facebook. I think I saw there was one with you and classmates at Bravada. Am I correct in that? This is correct. And pictured right next to me, the closest person right next to me, is Alex Lombrus, one of my childhood friends who, spoiler alert, this scholarly shout out is going out to. <gasps> Oh, I love that. It's all being connected, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it, it was a blast doing the whole ordeal. There was four of us, not just one, two or three, four of us brainstorming ideas for my backup project. That is going to be in lieu of the main idea that I had for my annual project that I do to apply the course material that I learn throughout all my courses. Nice, nice. So really productive conversations, really great class that's sparking these great conversations, and some great memories. Absolutely. Fabulous. Yeah, making some great memories. And yeah. so, yeah, I, I can confirm that, yes, the Ready, Set, Innovate post was me. Nice. And what was another thing that went well for you in the past few weeks? Okay, so second thing that went well, I actually went bowling with my family. Oh. Namely, my cousins Tyler and Tayana, while my dad was gone hunting for the season. Oh, that is so fun. Mm -hmm. And what did you score? Well, I can't exactly remember, but okay. yeah. Well, I bet it was something good. I just yeah. remember you at a top bowling event this past year, and you were just tearing it up. You were so good at bowling. Yeah, I mean, that was during season two with, and by the way, Charlotte, that, that's actually just a regular old scroll. Sorry, that second monitor is not a touch screen. Oh my gosh, it's you're very tech savvy, and so I just assumed that I might be able to, <laughs> to touch and scroll, but mm -hmm. so sorry about that. Yeah, don't you, yeah, just don't worry about it. So <laughs> all in all, it was a good time. Good between all three of us. Good. I mean, the my family at my aunt Anita's, they spoil me rotten wool. My dad was away. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. So you were just like a kid in the candy store with them? Basically. Oh, no. Except it's with hot tubs. <laughs> and Pepsis and wine glasses. Oh, ooh, fancy Pepsis. Mm -hmm. And plenty of prayer. Oh, I love that. And, and how did these activities and memories, how did they help you as a person? What did you gain out of it? How did you grow? Okay, both activities allow me to refresh my creativity, allowing for more effective work. I couldn't have said it better. Whenever we're refreshed and we reframe our minds, mm -hmm. we tend to have a better grasp of the situation that is ahead of us. Yeah. And it's a basic truth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because we've learned from last year that workaholism does take its toll. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just so glad that I get to do another season. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really glad that we're back and... And we're promoting healthy techniques and habits. Uh, and we get to continue with this podcast. Ab so Absolutely. With a new soundtrack and everything. And yeah. a another thing that you might have noticed is we've actually moved some of the content that was in the season two notes over to what is known as an episode cover. Yeah. And so allow me to explain all three of these uh, sections. So we have the episode's quotes, or tip of the episode, and the random facts mm -hmm. for each episode. So mm -hmm. for this episode's quote, real education must ultimately be limited to men who insist on knowing. The rest is mere sheep herding by mm -hmm. Ezra Pound. Hmm. Do you know what Ezra Pound's background is? <sighs> who they are? Little, little idea. Do you know? No, I do not. I was just wondering what context that is within and if they are a part of an education system or if they're a political figure. Right. Um, yeah, I feel, you know, you keep on talking about this cover. I'm going to Google them. Okay, absolutely. Our tip for the episode is to file for financial aid. The FAFSA opens soon and there are scholarships present here and there. Even though the FAFSA may not be open right now, as well as Oregon Tech Foundation scholarships or OSEC or wherever you are scholarships there are scholarships here and there so don't hesitate to apply and then really bizarre in 2006 an australian man tried to sell new zealand on ebay 
the price rose to 3000 before eBay shut it down. Oh my gosh, that's like pretty high. Yeah, the price the price basically got ridiculous. So, so I have an update on Ezra Pound. Sorry, I don't mean to take away from the New Zealand <laughs> selling. Uh, but so Ezra Pound is, it looks like he lived during the turn of the century, born in 1885, and he was an American poet and critic. And so it looks like he helped shape the way for like names that you probably will know, Robert Frost. Do you know that poem? Uh, that not sure. Okay, you might have learned about him in high school. Uh, Ernest Hemingway. Huh. No, maybe <laughs> Hemingway. All right. Well, maybe after this, we talk. We'll we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the great mm-hmm. authors and poets of our time. All right. Yeah, yeah that sounds really good. He's a poet, so. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all sorts of bizarre things are happening already. Yeah, yeah, lots of really great changes. Sorry, we'll turn back to the episode. Um, But along with the great, sometimes the not so great happens. So what's one setback you've encountered in the last few weeks? Well, for those of you who are local to Oregon Tech, you may have heard that the Maslow program proposed to Oregon Tech was denied because the scope was too broad and the funding and its structure would not support the program. That totally happens. Funding is a, is a huge issue at universities, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it, it is not, not in my jurisdiction to say, you know, because, you know, federal grants are, they're pretty harsh. Yeah, was it being funded by a federal grant or? One of the parties that we were benefiting was funded by a federal grant. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, if you're trying to, because the work that I do is within a within a grant, and it is, uh, I like to say grants are just wrapped around with with red tape, um, which makes it nice because they're they're really structured, um, but it is sometimes can be hard. It's not like malleable clay, right? It's more solidified aspects that that you're working and grooving with, right? But what's what's something that you can take away from this, even though it was something that you worked really hard on? Um, how how are you going to use your growth mindset and turn this into accomplishment? Project management is truly unpredictable, especially the when the exploration of new ideas, when the current ones get rejected, is critical to success. It's all about the exploration of ideas. It's yeah. all about the entrepreneurial spirit. Absolutely. And I think it's also a really great learning opportunity because sometimes we get denied, right? Sometimes um, ideas that we have aren't able to be, you know, created into something or the the fruition, right, isn't isn't what we expect it to be. And so it's it's a great way to to learn with grace, right? Um, to to have a a productive spirit to be like, okay, I understand that this doesn't fit here at the time, and that's okay, right? Exactly. And it's okay to be okay with the situation to learn that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, a bunch of, you know, good chunk of projects, you know, they succeed when there's a well-credentialed, highly skilled project manager who knows how to use waterfall, agile, hybrid, or even utilizing the Kanban method. Mm. Yeah. So essentially what that is, and I've studied project management, is the Kanban method is supposed to streamline workflows and increase value in projects. Yeah. Have you heard about the Kanban method? No. Well, maybe you've heard about the Kanban board. That sounds, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, essentially the Kanban board is basically, it's related to the Kanban method. Okay. It's, like I said, it was meant to streamline workflows, so. Uh Uh-huh. Perhaps you might have used it to help streamline a task or two, like the Washington, D.C. trip. Oh, well, I, so in in my project management, I always default back to the PERT method, um, which I find very successful. It's something that was developed by the United States military. Uh, You break out tasks. If you're working in a group, you assign tasks. It's really for group work and, um, and kind of break it into a flow chart. 
this needs to be done before that. And then you give yourself time frames, three different time frames. And then also like contingency plans. So if this doesn't work, this is the backup, right? And this is where the new flow goes after that. So I, I really enjoy working with PERT. And, and so in my time, I know I've learned other methods back when I was in school, but um, PERT's just something that's, that stuck to me. And so that's my project management tool. Yeah, I think I've heard of the PERT method as well as the con- contingency plans as Pert, well. PERT, yeah. Mm-hmm. P-E-R-T. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you for clarifying that. No, it's yeah. okay. I just wanted to make sure that if anyone's looking it up, they know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mainly we were taught about the critical path method. Oh, yeah, critical path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with, with the time constraints, there were plenty of tasks that, that were part of the critical path. Mm-hmm. And so... If one task were to be delayed by even a single second, the project as a whole would be delayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and given the events that were involved in each project, it probably would have extended past the school year. Oh, yeah. Something long. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really was disappointing, but... Hey, I've got my backup plan. Which will actually be briefly teased when we <laughs> go, get to the fourth question. Nice. Okay, well, what did you do as a college student recently? School has just begun. We're cruising into, what is this, week three, week four? Correct, week three. Week three. Uh, what are you doing as a college student? Uh, well, for starters, in week one, we introduced ourselves and began researching our business ideas for the class as we are going to create a business plan add these ideas in entrepreneurship one. That That's a good starting point. Mm-hmm. And then we went over what entrepreneurship is, paths to it, and how to solve problems in the business market using entrepreneurial skills. Mm-hmm. Discuss Porter's Five Forces and why industry research is important. Mm-hmm. And even week, weeks two and three had us delve deeper into research and begin forming our business models. Okay, nice. Which I am pretty much almost there because... Like I said, the the idea that I have, believe it or not, my business plan, you know, mm-hmm. my my idea is actually related to the backup project. Oh, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it'd be a great project for you to wrap around what you're learning this year. Yes, indeed. Perfect. Business three nineteen has been pretty interesting. In week one, we did an activity on how Coca Cola leveraged AI to get creative with their content, mm-hmm. especially with their custom made cards. Hmm. Hmm. And we also read up on how ideas are simple, unexpected, concrete, credible, and emotional. We're okay. actually going to be reading about the stories part after this episode. Nice. And believe it or not, I actually have a quite a bit of a unique story to tell regarding the content within Unexpected, the second okay. chapter in the book. So in the book, one, one of the screenwriters who was nominated for an award, mm-hmm. their, their career was originally in journalism, and they have this teacher... And what he did was he knew that the students had a defective schema on what journalism is and why. And they and he let them abide by that schema through his assignment where he made them write the leads individually. Oh. Does this sound a, a little bit agency? familiar? See? I it is. It's tickling my brain. And so after everyone finished their assignment, the teacher pulled the rug from underneath them and revealed the correct headline. There will be no school next Thursday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, kind of ironic. Yeah. And so he showed that the point of journalism was to get to, to the core of an idea. Uh-huh. What, what is the message that you're trying to communicate? Yeah. You're, you're essentially, that's essentially what a lead is. Mm-hmm. And so it was really fascinating because I had a similar experience when I first pulled off the Drift Race Double Ball exploit. Back then, I had a schema that the game, Stern Pinball Arcade specifically, that it had little to no bugs. Uh-huh. And I, I abided by that schema unconscious. Yeah. I unconsciously believed that schema by playing normally, and then the game surprised me by draining the second to last ball in the field, and out of the blue, I shot the scoop when the second to last ball finished draining. Turned out, 
the grace period was too short for the game to recognize that the multi ball was still going. Uh, and it shot out the extra ball. Uh-huh. That's how I pulled off my first drift race double ball exploit. The mm. game had violated my schema. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I I picture myself as the student in that in that situation, whereas the game is the teacher. Yeah, absolutely. Throwing you a curveball. So it's sort of a mirror, mm-hmm. if you come to think about it. Mm-hmm. And another key aspect that the book talked about, especially in the concrete section, there was a there was a teacher who wanted to teach her students about the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. Mm-hmm. And they're third graders, keep in mind. So they needed to be taught in a concrete way. Mm-hmm. So what she did was she grouped these students into two groups mm-hmm. of blue eyes and brown eyes. Mm-hmm. And for the first part of the experiment, she gave the brown eyes total superiority over the blue-eyed students. And what happened was the brown-eyed students got super discriminatory toward the, the blue-eyed students. They gave them cones. They belittled them. And even the brown-eyed students, they got to recess while the blue-eyed students had to stay in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, they, the blue-eyed students were treated very un, very harshly during this period of time. And then one brown-eyed student asked the teacher how they could teach if they had blue eyes themselves. Oh. And she and they flipped the narrative. Oh, wow. And so now they're facing against everyone's like pent-up rage too. Yes. And so it, it really taught a very, very important lesson, which is true in all situations, even in the online community, don't discriminate. Absolutely. And when we see it, we need to step up, right? Abs- absolutely. I mean... Discrimination is no way to go about solving a problem, really. If a conflict arises, it has to be a unanimous decision with a sense of consensus. That's what I learned in my small group communications course. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then in social media... Except for, you know, if if there's a group that there isn't representation in, right, and they decide, ah, we're going to make a choice without, you know, anyone's that impacts people that aren't at the table then maybe we you know that unanimous isn't taken into account yeah right i mean it it really is subjective yeah yeah what professor brown did tell teach me in in his small group communications course was that communication conversation in general it's not that specific and yet not random and it, it is a mystery that will elude many students who are taking small group communications. I mean, feel free to leave it down in the comments, by all means. Absolutely. How about your uh, other classes that you've been taking this term? Okay, social media marketing. The first post made was a welcome back for students. And obviously that one didn't get posted. Hmm. And so we looked through posts that were all successful in other colleges as well. And then we made subtle branding posts, which all happened during week one and week two. And it's actually going to be continuing on for the rest of the term in the social media marketing class. And we even learned how to use AI in social media. I mean, I I was writing crazy prompts into ChatGPT to get everything right and even (laughs) innovative. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny what they'll come up with. And I think it's really funny. When you ask chat GBT to put emojis, there's always a rocket ship that it puts. Mm. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I, I've sort of noticed that, yeah. Yeah, you can tell like brands online that use chat GBT or AI to make their social media posts because there's a rocket ship in it. Like every time, it's so funny. Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely hilarious. And we had two social media assignments the first time we were introduced to AI and social media. The nice. first one was to ask AI to generate a content idea mm-hmm. and then abide by that idea specifically. Oh, wow. Which I did, and it got pretty good remarks. Nice. But the one after that was the one where we had to go outside of campus and make a post. That was where I went to Bravada and did the Ready, Set, Innovate brainstorm practice. Yeah. Good job. And that's how it all happened. Yeah, that's fun. 
Yeah, it was all, it was just four of us, and we were brainstorming on the backup plan that I had. Mm -hmm. Kind of ironic. Mm -hmm. So it was it was basically perfect. It applied all the knowledge from all the courses that I am currently taking, even Leadership One, where we were introduced to heroic theory nice. and the interactive framework model for leadership, as okay. well as functions of leaders and followers. Fabulous. We got a heads up for major assignments, such as writing on a leader from my generation. And I got word that it's actually going to be a presentation. And more on the leader that I've chosen at the end of the episode in the scholarly shoutouts. Wonderful. And I found out that the assessment could be, that could be taken for the class was already done. That assessment being Strength Finder. <gasps> oh my gosh. Ironic. Who, who's teaching that class? Don DeSaro. Ooh. I wonder if I should connect with him because I'm a Strength Finder's coach. I can coach you on your assessment. Oh, yes. Absolutely. You guide yourself. Mm -hmm. And I also learned about the spiral of experience and the ocean model. I took a questionnaire outside of the class and found out I was high on openness conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and a medium in neuroticism. Oh, okay. Okay. I feel like doing this podcast really helps you with scoring high on openness. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. By, by all means. Mm -hmm. And in other news, as explained earlier, the Maslow program got rejected. Mm -hmm. Zoe left the building. Mm hmm and then new prospective leaders have entered Oregon Tech, and as a servant leader, I'm assisting in their development. Okay. Kind of interesting when you think about it. Yeah, giving them space to grow. So this was a lot. You've done a lot. You're working a lot. How are you going to enhance things moving forward in your term based on what has happened in these past three weeks? There has to be a sticky idea to start your canvas. There has to be a counterintuitive message to implement. What that, when that message is implemented, the media takes a different meaning, making the idea stick out for a longer period of time because we want to learn more. These ideas are everywhere. Making an idea effective takes creativity, especially amongst team members, to create a solution that will stick out for years on the internet, especially when you connect people to their emotions mm. and make these ideas credible. Absolutely. I mean, right. counterintuitiveness. I mean, yeah, this... The Heath Brothers book, Made to Stick, really astounded me. And I I might have just recently made a breakthrough in my entrepreneurship class. That's fabulous. Regarding my backup project. Okay. Which will be teased coming up. All right. Well, let's shift uh, the conversation from academics to content right now. Uh, what did you do as a content creator recently? Okay, so recently Ubisoft made the crew online again. This is an update, Ooh. but we are uncertain that it will last that long, leading to a Stop Killing Games initiative for the European Union. Wow. So now it's the entirety of the European Union. There was already something done in the UK. Oh, okay. So it's basically every other country huh. in, in the European Union. Okay. So We're all hopping on board. Yeah, and then I'm going to save the middle bullet point for last because we actually have a clip to react to. Okay. So next, Nintendo's actually gotten stricter on copyright regulations, okay. including an emulation and taking down gameplay without commentary. Okay, that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? There has to be something added to, mm -hmm. to, to it or else it's just using their content. That right. makes sense. And, and when you think about corporations like Disney and that, they're really strict on their copyright laws. Yeah. So what, they're just following. What happened, Nintendo? What happened? Yeah, I'm trying to get back in on it. Yeah, absolutely, by all means. All right. Now, folks, for you Tekken fans out there, I have really bad news. Hey, Hachi Mishima is back from the dead. Ooh. Yikes. I mean, spoiling Tekken 7 really just isn't going to cut it. Oh, no. J just roll the clip. Roll clip. Okay. So, for those of you who don't know, Heihachi Mishima was thrown into a volcano after the events of Tekken 7. And lo and behold, at the end of the trailer for one of Tekken 8's DLC characters, we re are seeing with a man with two scars. I mean, really... That last blow that Kazuya dealt should have been it. 
Namco, we are disappointed with you because there's one truth that's self-evident. Heihachi Mishima should not be back in Tekken. Period. Whoa, that's an intense trailer. Wow. Tekken 8. Bum, bum, bum. I mean, why did you have to do that, Namco? Why bring back a man from the dead? Yeah. Because now basically Tekken 7's story makes zero sense. Oh, yeah. So they've just like completely disregarded like the lore and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Which means the new addition of Reina, the new character who's actually Heihachi's illegitimate daughter. That's basically, it serves no purpose. Yeah. Huh, that's whack attack. Yeah. From throwing Heihachi into that volcano to Reina coming in, into existence. I mean, Tekken 9 is going to be really bizarre. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And I wonder if him, well, I don't know anything about the game and, and like the, the system within it, but I wonder if he'll be even harder to beat with like new superpowers for coming back from the dead or something like that. Well, you'll you'll have to play the DLC story to find out about his new powers. Oh, okay. I'm not going to spoil anything. Ah, I am still playing Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> I'm uh, so bad at video yeah. games. Okay. Okay, but let's talk about Season 3 again and the new changes. Okay, so as you might have saw, speaker icons. So now you can see who is speaking during the podcast if you are viewing rather than just simply listening to it. And... Some sections, this, you've seen the sections. So now they won't get you and I confused with each other. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope no one, <laughs> our voices are kind of different, right? Yeah, they, 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 they literally are different. Ooh, yikes. Ooh. Yeah, I really didn't expect the time to run out this fast, so we better yeah. wrap it quickly. All right. So, again, speaker icons, sounds, sections move to episode covers. Uh -huh. And we got a new sound system. Mixer with XLR microphone is in the works. Okay. And for our sneak peek for the backup project, think of a new way to interact with the Nightmare board game. With Pokemon training cards. A tournament in lieu of the Maslow program. Mm. I mean, season three has drastic changes. But no anticipated recurring guests is known thus far. Okay. Updates are going to be announced if anything changes. Mm-hmm. For our college events and club meetings, we've got Hootie's Birthday, the Get Involved Expo, Top Tuesdays, Oregon Tech Foundation photo shoot, and the Hispanic Heritage Month. Nice. And out of the scale of 1 to 10, how well did this help me get involved with Oregon Tech or the Climate Community and why? It was a 10. Not only did I get some relaxation in between my studies, but also got to practice my leadership skills by identifying different leadership styles and models such as practical leadership, transformative leadership, leader follower situation, and even the ocean model. Nice. So that them. is our episode. Alas, we have come to the conclusion of the season three premiere. Woohoo! It's time for our scholarly shout outs. Our first scholarly shout out goes out to Alex Lombras, who took the initiative to get coffee for myself, him, and my mentor, Professor Wyman, to facilitate a learning discussion, as well as the Oregon Tech Foundation Scholarship donors for helping provide scholarships to students they need to continue their education. Absolutely, doing some really good work, given some, some students that have worked really, really hard, some well-deserved money to help push them through. And then our creator credit goes out, our first creator credit goes to Markiplier, believe it or not. <laughs> yes! Oh my gosh, I'm so behind this. I love Markiplier. Yes, yeah, same here. So... He's the content creator who helped inspire me alongside Jacksepticeye and Dan TDM to pursue video creation as a career. Mm. And he's also the leader that I'm talking about in my Leader of My Generation assignment. I love that. I'm, I'm rebelling a little bit. Oh. Uh, because, so? because typically TV stars or athletes or political figures, they're excluded from the assignments. But acting is not Markiplier's main job. No. His main job is to create videos that entertain us, yeah. especially through his gaming content. Well, he did. He he's a huge leader of of YouTube, right? Yes, he's, he's starting, yeah. He set the standard. Yeah. And Side projects, yeah. Yeah, and creator credit goes out to Ashley Van Essen for teaching social media skills we'll need for aspiring careers on social media. 
the lead. She's fantastic. Yes. And then we have one last birthday shout out to give out. I would like to give out a birthday shout out to one of my childhood friends, Melvin, a.k.a. XX Olive Juice. Ooh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday indeed. Wait, olive juice? Is that what you said? Yes, olive juice. No way. (laughs) Yeah. How did that come to be? So I heard this birthday is going to be a pretty big one. Definitely make it count. Heck yeah. Have some fun. Mm -hmm. Be safe. Surround yourself with great people that love you. Feel the love. Eat lots of cake if you're able to. If not, just be content, right? Absolutely. And I hope you folks enjoyed this season three premiere. Mm -hmm. Good to be back. Yes. As usual, this podcast will be available on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify. And now that I figured out the Spotify RSS feeds... We're now available on iHeartRadio and Amazon Ooh, Music. You can wow. you can now listen to us through your Amazon Echo or Alexa devices. Alexa, turn up this podcast. Alexa, turn on Life of a Content Creating College Student by Wayne Z0207. I love that. I love that. Yes. So we're basically everywhere now. We are. <laughs> We're everywhere. That's kind of a little threat. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, I'm really excited to see how season three turns out. Mm -hmm. More on this backup project at a later date and perhaps sooner than you may think. Absolutely. Also, update, we're releasing this every three weeks now instead of every other week. So once a month. Mm -hmm. And we're experimenting a little bit. 10 a.m. uploads. Okay. 10 a.m. Santa's coming to town. Yep, absolutely. So thank you folks so much for tuning in. Remember, there'll be disappointments in life, but we humans have the power to turn those disappointments into accomplishments. This is Wayne Z0207, aka Colton W. Hurst, fourth wall breaking one man army, signing out. Good night. Good night. Special thanks is provided to your young institute of technology for this academic opportunity bestowed upon the podcast's creator. Podcast availability is made possible by the following platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify. For more of your favorite fourth wall breaking moments, visit Wayne Ian Hero 207-4thWallBreakingGammer.com.